Indeed. Such a fascinating discussion. Thank you so much, Ryan. And um, we all look forward to have you around during the next four days of the Global Web at Impact Week with these 100,000 attendees, the biggest ever hybrid edition of Webit with two locations in Sofia and Miami. Our next presenter is uh, S. Most probably he will tell you, and we all know him as the originator of the fourth industrial revolution term. And he is going to be talking about cracking the code of planet, people, and profit. I would like to warmly welcome Hendrik von Schiel. Hendrik, can you tell us in one minute what is the fourth industrial revolution? Hello, my name is Hendrik von Schiel, and I'm best known as the originator of the fourth industrial revolution. Let me give you a one minute view on what the fourth industrial revolution is. The fourth industrial revolution is the colliding of three worlds together the digital world, the physical world, and the augmented world virtual world. So three worlds are colliding together. They are evolving and fueled by 76 megatrends that are disrupting every aspect of our life, how we live, how we consume, how we interact. They are disrupting governments, universities, any type of business, how they compete, how they grow, how to automate. Every aspect of our life is being changed. How we consume, interact, how our economy works, Everything is interrupted and disruptive exponentially. So when something disrupts, you also have an opportunity. The fourth industrial revolution puts the biggest opportunity of all on at all. Why? Because when disruption comes, opportunity comes as well. And the centerpiece of the fourth industrial revolution are you. And you as a human being has an ability to adapt and take advantage of it. The fourth industrial revolution is our opportunity to create a better, stronger, environment-friendly, people-focused and planet-focused focus that we can do from our side. You are the fourth industrial revolution, cracking the code of planet, people and prosperity. This is one of the topics I've been focusing on quite a while. It's humanity at a crossroad by 2030. So I will try to give you some insight what has brought humanity at the point we are now? What are we expecting the next couple of years? The trends that are coming, a little bit trend spotting, and what are the options that we have? So up front, I can already tell you, I'm not the naysayer. I'm not the person that looks negative at the, of the future. I see solutions, I see opportunities, I see a lot of hope, and I see this is our opportunity to make a difference today. So. Getting started with this, what makes me qualified to take on such a topic? So for the people that haven't heard me yet, I have done 19 strategies for countries so far. I'm best known as the originator of the industry for the zero, that the fourth industrial revolution topics everybody's focusing on, and then the digital revolution, so digitalization in a nutshell. So by taking this on, let's go straight forward to it. What brings us to what we have right now? In 2008, I did the strategy for Germany and we realized something quite significant. We realized that there are five trends merging together and we call that the digital um, agenda, the digital um, architecture that came in Europe and is a global thing today. That was the pre um, post a pre-element that we saw for the industry for the zero. Half a year later, we announced the industry for the zero. So what we realized there, what we haven't seen before, is that big mega trends collide together. And when mega trends collide together, they bring a paradigm shift. When a paradigm shift happens, it changes everything in its surrounding. So different to the other industrial revolution, the fourth industrial revolution is exponential. That means it disrupts every industry, everything we interact with, everything in our life, how we communicate, how our economy works, everything faster than ever before. It changes the boundaries of prosperity, of equal rights, industry borders. It changes everything to a degree that we haven't seen before in the shortest period of time ever. So, the fourth industrial revolution is fueled 
by 76 megatrends. And most, when they hear that, they know only know the red ones, which are the technology ones. This technology sets are 17 technology sets that are emerging in three different waves. We're just in the second wave, but they are the ones that are a hope for us where we can innovate our way out. The other ones, regulatory, workforces, environment, economic trends, are all trends that are within the elements of pollution, migration, sixth extension period. All of these ones are mega trends. And what happens when they all collide together, they create a huge disruption. Every time disruption happens, opportunity happens as well. So what is the underlying theme in that? The underlying theme in that is that the fourth industrial revolution, we have only seen the first phase. We're heading into the next three phases. So when you think you know what is coming, there's far more to come. So the first phase of the four metamorphosis phases in the industry for the zero is the technology phase. That emerges in three waves. The phase we're moving towards now, very heavy, is the environment revolution. That is, we need to focus on how to change our element, how we use energy, infrastructure, consumption. It is driven by the element that we want to change the water cycles. So the emission of carbon that, that will come in, the core element, core problem with that is we're changing our water cycles with that. The other element is on how we consume and how we are um, packaging and how we pollute. So part of this is the totally end cycle from end to end of full sustainability. That is the focus on footprint. That is the focus on, on zero marginal cost and all of these elements. Then we have the next wave coming and it's already merging under the wave, but it will emerge quite strong by 2025. And that's the economic revolution. Everything we think of our pillars in our economy are fundamentally changing. Our productivity level is focused on the wrong concept. Our growth level, our concepts on capitalism, these elements will fundamentally break in thousand pieces to reassemble in other element. And then we have the last revolution, which is the reality revolution, mainly driven by quantum technology, cybersecurity, bioinformatics, and not bio. Um, 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 bioinformatics. So they will change our simple view on reality and what we think, how things are working and how we're creating reality. This is quite, quite radical. So fundamentally, everything we know to be true is actually not really the same way. So why is it I'm focusing to talk about how to crack the knot on the fourth industrial revolution? The fourth industrial revolution is the driver for all these changes that are radical. So within that also resides the opportunity that we have within it. So when you look from Harrington, the, there were two main elements looked on. How are we using our resources, pollution, our food, our in, industrial input and productivity? And this curve has changed two times. What he's predicting very clear is by 2040, we are in trouble, not just a bit. I'm even pushing it forward by 2030. When huge trouble. We're consuming two times the planet by 2030, right? We are extending by 2030 already 50% of our plant and animal species we have. The sixth extension is very, very strong on us. We have a huge problem with our water cycle, right? We see that it, when 5 billion people will be affected of shortage of water by 2050, that means 2030, there will already be a shortage in the biggest amount of people, right? This all looks bad and this really, really bad. So what are the options we have, right? In reality, we only have two options. Either we do, because these problems were already known by 2071, either we do as we do since 2071, business as usual, we talk about it, but we do very little, or, we go into radical change. These are the only two options we have because by 2030, there's a crossroad. A crossroad means this. There's, we go on one road, we cannot go back because then the time has passed, right? So we are that generation that makes the changes for the next generations to come. So with that, 
I believe that there's a simple solution to it, even more simpler than what we think. So what has been past challenges we had many years? Businesses is looking for profit. People are being used as workforce and the planet is giving the resources and we are the people that are in between, right? So we are living in this element right here. The solution is very simple. We are focusing on how we can reset our balance in the planet. That means work and growth and natural resources can be in the balance when we think in our supply chain from the very beginning. We need to reset that we as human beings are not on the top of the pyramid. We are part of an ecosystem. Part of the ecosystem is we need to be part of the overarching system. So we have very simple elements. We can do that, right? We put planet first. We have something unique as human beings. We have our ability to innovate. Since any industrial revolution, the human being has an ability to adapt to changes that are coming. That means our ability to adapt is our ability to innovate, our ability to transform, our ability to relate to each other. We have a very strong element of belonging. We are not separate from nature. We are part of nature. That is part of our belonging we all feel within. It. If we keep our curiosity with what's happening in the planet, we will also find solutions on how we as human beings can be a balance towards that in a very simplified way. Our ambition normally goes into the career path. This balance can be a balance between we can be part of a system and still make money to it. Now, in order to crack that nut on planet, we must be part of planet. In order to crack the nut on people, we need to do something very simple. We need to break the triple bottom line. So since the third industrial revolution, we have by design increased our automation, but not our output on how far people are working. People are working around 40 hours on average in Europe, right? We could bring that down way to 25. We should think about and rethink our way we approach productivity, our way we approach equality, and our way we approach salary. How come? If we can crack that nut, the planet requires a footprint from A to zero and a marginal cost. The profit that we need needs to be based on that we are breaking down globalization. Globalization is interconnected altogether. We need to break it so that the price for a person that they work, they also have the ability to pay for it. So in closing, we live in the most blessed times of all. We have more equal rights. We have more technology. We have more knowledge. We have more money in our hand. We have more free time than ever before. We are the most blessed generations of any generations to ever walk the earth. We are also the generations that has the opportunity to take the right decisions. We need to be innovative, creative with the abilities we have. That is our core abilities. We are the most educated generations that can take on that challenge. The challenge is ours to take because the next generation will have an inability to do so. So the burden is high, but I believe that we can take on that challenge. If we focus on being part of the ecosystem, part of the planet, if we focus on putting people at the centerpiece and profit will always follow. I believe, we believe that we live in the best generations and time of all. The table we have to lift is so difficult that we have to do it together. And that brings me to the to-do list that I published in Times Square in times one and a half years ago. What are the key elements we need to focus on by 2030 to have an impact on the planet? And it's not all carbon. So with that, I'm opening up for the panel discussion. Thank you very much.